today, we are going to be following a family of red-tailed black cockatoos. Together, we will see something truly amazing. The first flight of a fledgling bird. We will also see just how much wildlife the river red gums in Central Australia support. Few trees in Australia are as well known as the river red gum. They are the most widely distributed of all the 850 species of eucalyptus. The seven subspecies of river red gum cover the Australian mainland, except the very southwest of Western Australia. Looking at these harsh Central Australian landscapes from above, it is easy to see that the dry riverbeds are a refuge. Each year I travel to Alice Springs for work. On my first day this year, it was 40 degrees. Late in the afternoon, a storm hit flooding the town. That night, as the storm passed, the river began to flow. The next morning, the atmosphere was thick with humidity. Low-level clouds blanketed the West Macdonald Ranges. Through the still silence, I heard an unmistakable sound. The call of a red-tailed black cockatoo echoed through the landscape. In this riverbed, just outside of Alice Springs is where I met the family of red-tailed black cockatoos for the first time. And this journey really begins. Only after observing them for some time did I discover that in this one tree, there were three active nesting hollows. Without these old, gnarly and broken river red gums, it is safe to say that these birds would not be here. These birds have a very close relationship with the river red gums. Around 95% of our parrots in Australia need tree hollows. These parrots are called obligate hollow nesters. So no hollow equals no breeding equals no birds. From spending this time out here, I observed that even the smallest dead branch, some just a few centimetres in diameter, can be used as nesting hollows. Everywhere around me on this morning, I could see dozens, if not a hundred or more, active nesting hollows, occupied by red-tailed black cockatoos, budgies, ringnecks, Galahs and Major Mitchells. It was these observations that inspired me to commit to capturing the fledglings first flight. Day after day, I returned to this riverbed. I spent hours just standing in the one place, which seemed like work at the beginning. But then after a few days, I noticed a pattern emerge. In the morning, the parents would fly to the nesting tree. They would call out, encouraging the fledgling to leave the hollow. For the first few mornings, the fledgling would come up, have a look around, and then go back down. After a while, the parents would take off and leave the area. In the afternoon, just before sunset, the same. The parents would come back to the tree, 
encourage the fledglings out, then fly away to a nearby tree to roost. All this time, the other two fledglings that had already left the hollows were close by being taken care of by their parents. These hollow and gnarled river red gums in Central Australia are more than just homes for parrots. Even something as simple as the shade they provide has value to our wildlife. This black flanked rock wallaby escapes the heat by resting in the tree's shade. These in turn attract predators like dingoes to the area. Bees and other insects also use these trees as places to build their hives. Even this long nosed dragon has made its way through the hollow tree to the edge of this hollow. No doubt attracted by the cicadas but possibly the most elusive of all the creatures that call these hollows home might be microbats. Even in the middle of Alice Springs, the river red gums are providing abundant habitat for this wildlife. For days I watched the hollow while all this had been happening around me. But there is an amount of anticipation in the air. It was late in the afternoon. It must have been 40 degrees. The fledgling was clearly ready to go. It had been sitting at the edge of the hollow for hours, making these gentle calls. But as the parents again landed in the tree, constantly calling out to encourage it, it just didn't fly. The next morning had to be it. I arrived here even earlier to set up every camera I had. This is exactly what I'd been waiting for for the last week of filming. I heard the parents' distant call as they approached. I started to roll the cameras.
spending this time out here with these incredible birds taught me so much about the importance of tree hollows. In Australia, we have such a diverse range of wildlife that is specifically adapted to take advantage of the way eucalypts twist, snap, break and hollow out. We Australians need to recognise the importance of hollows as homes.